come to the McLaren Senna. If I'm shouting, it's because we have these helmets on which have intercoms in, and I can't hear anything. What did you just say? <laughs> and we're here with Paul Wallace from Supercars of London. The idea is that uh, before I arrived, I put out the opportunity for you guys to ask questions about the Senna. We've picked out some of the best, and we're going to answer them on this fairly steady lap, uh, because it's not every day that you get to drive a brand new hypercar. No. So here we are. <laughs> first things first, let's start this car up, which is up here. Then you have to hold down race. Uh, yeah, hold down race. And then the screen retracts. And then you can put it in And away drive. we go. I'm going to bring this forward a tiny bit. No, I don't have my harnesses on. I, I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna assume we're good to go because no one's like... Yeah, I think so. No one's, no one's flagging me otherwise. I feel like I'm just stealing a Santa here. <laughs> Everything cool? Everything good? Yeah, everyone's, everyone's there. No one's waving at me like I shouldn't be doing this. So. Yeah, we're fine. Yes, so um, this is going to be a separate video from the actual Senna video because I've got, I've got a feeling this is going to be about 10 minutes long. Yeah. And uh, this is coming off the back of both Paul and I having our first drive in this car. Um, but, you know, it's not every day that you get to spend any time with a car like this. And this channel is all about trying to provide you with as much of an insight into what it's like being around these cars. So, we've picked out some questions. Paul's going to be question master, and we're both going to give our feedback as to what you want to know. Fire away, Paul. Right, here we go. Question number one is from Bruno Bright. Is it really, emphasis on the really, worth all the extra money over a track-focused LT? Are the revolting looks overshadowed by the extended track ability? I know it's all relative given its price, target market, etc. But hey, we need to know. So, is it worth the money over an LT, really? Yeah, so you're looking at about 300 grand for a McLaren 675 LT. Yeah. And you're looking at 750? No, uh, with your bits, because let's face it, Every one of them is going to have bits. Yeah, so 800 plus. 800 plus, so yeah. Is it worth the extra half a million quid? Crikey. I would say yes. It's, it's honestly, it is such a massive step on. The LT is ultimately a very fast road car, which is also well sorted on the track. Yeah. This thing, I still don't know how they managed to put number plates on this. No. It, honest to God, the closest thing I've experienced to this is an R8 LMS, which is the type of car that would race in the GT3 series of uh, VLN or uh, World Endurance Championship yep, yep. type of car. It is truly in every aspect. It's next basi level. basically like a de restricted Le Mans car. Yeah, that's basically it. It's a, it's a de restricted non-prototype level yeah. Le Mans car. So in terms of the development which has gone into that, you have to take into account all of the R&D which has made this car possible. I would say that when you look at the prices of where P1s are now and being over a million pounds, and the fact that this is got double the amount of downforce, it's 150 kilograms lighter, yeah. uh, I, I honestly don't know if a P1 would know which way this thing went. <laughs> no. Honestly, it's just totally different grade. This is a real So I would up. say yes. I would say that yes, it is worth it. It's a t it's op it is operating in a different world. Exactly. And Your I think on that? to people that haven't seen one in the flesh, when you do see one in the flesh, the shapes and the lines and everything starts to make sense. And then when you combine that with what you have on the track, but still having the ability of driving it on the road and doing your morning commute, it's just like mind bending, isn't it? Yeah. Seriously, seriously cool. We've got Winnipeg underscore car underscore life. Do the lower windows in the doors really make a difference for driving on the track as far as car placement? No. No. Not at all. I haven't even noticed them when I'm driving Me either. No. I think it's a very aesthetically cool feature. It does look, I feel like I'm in an, um, an aquarium with no water. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, and no fish. This is honestly the first time I've even looked at it. Yeah. There's definitely nothing think, to do with car placement. No, I think anything. if you're looking down there for car placement, then you're looking the wrong place. Yeah. yeah. It looks cool. I bet it looks better from the outside. Weird when you turn up at the traffic lights and the yeah. guy next to you looks at you rearranging your crutch or something yeah. at the lights. Or that trying to sneak quite funny. cheeky but Generally, text. I just think it looks good. Yeah. I think what, even one of the sort of senior McLaren technicians 
asked what I thought of the interior and I was like, I've not once looked at the interior whilst I'm driving. You are just fully focused. There's too much going on. Yeah. You care about what anything looks like. So the windows, yeah. <laughs> Don't really think about them too much. Spencer La, where does the center sit in the McLaren lineup? At the top. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't even need to finish that. It is smack bang at the top and I love it. It is a technological showcase. P1's up there because it's hybrid, etc. But uh, like I said, it, as P1, I don't think would know where this thing went. No. no. <laughs> I love this question. Shimshams has asked a question that I think shows the development of Mr. JWW's life because you famously said, sell your wife, sell your kids, I need one of these on the 675LT drive. Shimshams wants to know, now that you have a wife, I would love to know her reaction if you said, sell your wife, sell your kids, you need one of these. <laughs> would you sell your wife to well, get a McLaren Senna? <laughs> <laughs> well, she's as much of a petrol head as I am, so she totally understands. You know, we can split the divorce fees and have one each. <laughs> JTR Tech. What's the biggest surprise about the Senna that you weren't expecting before driving it? Good question. Very good question. You take that one first. Okay, I think my biggest surprise, now I've never actually experienced proper downforce in a car. I don't have much experience of race, racing, essentially. Uh -huh. So that was my biggest surprise of just physically feeling a car's downforce working through corners. Yeah. That, to me, was a sense that I've never experienced before. So now that I have now, it was just such a surprise. I would say I'm on a very similar wavelength as you. Yeah. The lateral grip, which is basically all about downforce, yeah. is taken straight off the racetrack. That's, yeah. that's incredible. The brakes, though, for me. Yes. Stopping yeah. power. Um, it really does like your all your organs smash to the front of your chest yeah. and your eyeballs have a bit of a readjustment as they compress to the front of your skull yeah and i was actually subconsciously there bracing myself in case that you wanted to <laughs> test the brakes for a bit of a field test i'd never do that to you <laughs> <laughs> braking and cornering is where this car yeah. is in a different league to anything 100 percent yeah i think we're in the realms now of most manufacturers where all straight line punch is all fairly ridiculous yeah but the stuff that separates the men from the boys is the braking and turning um this the, this thing i know i keep going on and on about it but Honestly and truly, it, it is a, uh, they've managed to homologate a race car. Yeah. And I think that's the best way of explaining it, really. Yeah. yeah, the brakes. I know that might sound simple, but honestly, it's, it's game changing. And braking makes you faster. Yeah. I know that, that sounds daft, but if you can brake later than anyone else, good stuff. Final question from Sheath underscore George. I can imagine his name is actually George Sheath. Right. Is the cost of the scientific findings and mechanics developed into the car actually relative to the car's price and performance? 100%, yeah, 100%. So, I mean, I, we've had the honour of being able to sit and chat with Bruno Senna himself yeah. lately. And when you sit with him and he, he talks over some of the uh, finer details of the car, which you might not appreciate while you're actually walking around it, there's an area of the wing that it's, it's sculpted and sort of arches on the left and right side of the wing, but if you notice the rear of the wing is actually flat, uh, that's to control dirty air leaving the top of the car. This is a road car we're talking about, yeah. right? Not, not a Le Mans car, it's a road car, and they're talking about dirty air. Just an incredible thing to walk around, and when someone starts pointing at things, you're like, this spent a lot of time in the wind tunnel, you know, this thing oh, yeah. starts to make sense now. I think you could spend at least two hours talking to an actual specialist that has helped design this car yeah. and still not cover 50% of what has actually 100%. gone into it to build it to what it is now. And then one of the other things, going back to the question previously, what surprised me was actually how approachable the car is. Yeah. So I thought, when you read it on paper, that all this downforce and all this power, you're like, ah oh, man, this is gonna be really spiky and crazy. But you can really build up to that. That is very clever development. Yeah. Th that's those guys making the electronics feel friendly, etc. So God knows what 
the R&D involved in this was, but I think it makes this thing a deal. Yeah. <laughs> I'm absolutely Strackers. blown away. Absolutely. So yeah, this is uh, an additional video. Uh, link below to the proper first drive, which I can assure you is obscene. But um, yeah, if you want to know anything more, questions in the comments below, and I'll try and get them answered for you. Thanks to Paul. Go and check out his channel because he's been doing some driving too and we've both been stepping out of the car scratching our heads as to how this thing's possible <laughs> as always thanks for watching i shall see you next time ciao